Good morning. I just sliced up some sourdough for breakfast. I am about to go run and take a shower. Did a really good workout. My arms are shaking right now. I <laughs> hope it doesn't uh, show through on the video, but um, got this ready so that the kids can have breakfast while I go upstairs and shower and get ready for the day. We also have some of these sourdough English muffins. I try to make these weekly. They are such a good bread. We all really enjoy that. Okay. The last two here for breakfast. The boys are always first to eat in the morning, but the girls have made it down. What are you having on your toast? Jam. Some jam. We have some bananas here too. Why don't you have a banana? I had burnt toast. You had burnt toast? Why'd you have burnt toast? Did you toast it two times or what? It was barely toasted, so then I just put it in the oven. Okay. And, and what are you having on your toast? Oh, butter. is this your second piece? Mm -hmm. Let's see, is this one better? Yes. Oh, much, much better. The kids have all had breakfast. Uh, with our toast, we usually have some fruit too, so whether that's right now we have lots of fruit. We've got bananas, apples, we have clementines, lots to choose from. So usually we have uh, fruit with our toast. Sometimes we'll do yogurt. The kids can just kind of grab what they want. We kind of eat separately for breakfast. It's not like a sit down family meal, like lunch and especially dinner are. Sometimes I will cook up some eggs, but usually we have a pretty simple breakfast. So toast and fruit today. And we're just kind of getting cleaned up from toast stuff. And then I'm gonna make myself a smoothie for breakfast this morning a few times a week. I will have a smoothie. Sometimes I eat with the kids, sometimes I don't. Just depends how I'm feeling on that particular day. But today I want to, so here's the thing. I did a really good workout this morning and I find the easiest way to just quickly get lots of protein in me is to have my smoothie with my protein powder. And so that's, that's what I'm gonna do today, switching hands with the camera because my arm is getting sore once again. I won't complain about this all day, but yeah, my arm's getting sore from holding up the camera. Um, so I'm gonna make my smoothie. I do this in the Vitamix. Um, I'll just get started and show you. First, I pour in some almond milk. I add a couple spoonfuls, generous spoonfuls of cottage cheese. Cottage cheese adds some good protein. It also makes your smoothie really nice and creamy. Then I pour in frozen berries. Usually it's strawberries. Then I add my protein powder and this is not the protein powder that is in here. So I buy my protein powder right now in five pound containers that are so big. So I just transfer the powder to this smaller container and then I can just keep this in my pantry close by. Uh, but the one, the powder that this actually is, is the All Max ISO, oh goodness. Now I'm second guessing. Okay, I'll just go ahead and get that and I'll show you what protein powder I use. It's natural, unflavored. And then I also put a scoop of collagen into my smoothie and that's it. Okay, here's the protein. All Max Iso Natural. I knew it was Iso something. Uh, whey protein isolate. I just poured myself a cup of coffee and I want to show you what else I have going on in the kitchen here. So first of all, I did notice this very ripe banana. These, this big stack of bananas I bought on the weekend. This banana was from the bunches I bought the weekend before. So I'm going to have to make either a smoothie or banana bread or something in the next couple of days. But I also got started making my sourdough bread. The first stretch and fold is done. So I'll come over the next couple hours, every half hour or so, give the bread another stretch and fold. That bread won't actually bake until tomorrow. And then just kind of last minute here, I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna make some English muffins to go with our dinner tonight. So this is just for now, four cups of flour, two cups of water, 
and one cup of my sourdough starter. So I got that all mixed together. I do move these bowls of sourdough to this back storage room here, right off the kitchen, because our, our heater is in here. And so the sourdough just rises, does a little bit better in the warmth of this room. So the sourdough sits in that room all day. We did the first batch of dishes this morning. Then I made my smoothie, made some more dirty dishes, but the kitchen counter is basically clean. I've got my coffee. I'm going to take it to the living room. The kids are all ready to start school. And I do like to keep a pretty clean kitchen. Yes, we do a lot of creating in the kitchen. We're making a lot of meals. We're, we're, I feel like I'm making food sometimes all day long. So the kitchen definitely gets messy, but after the meal's done, I like to kind of get it all clean, as clean as I can, and then I'll be back in the kitchen before you know it. The kids are all heading outside. We finished most of the, most of our school morning, and usually they have fruit for a morning snack, and so they finished up our clementines today, took those outside, and I bought, okay, I went to the grocery store and bought three cases of clementines over the weekend, they were on sale, I think it was $4 for five pounds. I bought three cases, three cases. This was two and a half days ago. Two and a half days ago, three cases, all gone. All gone. <laughs> I feel like I had like four of them. Um, I should have grabbed more when I could because you can just eat so many of them. But I thought I should go back to the grocery store and see if I can get more of them while they're on sale. And then I thought, no, we have a fruit basket full of apples and bananas. They can eat those apples and bananas. And then once those are gone, maybe I'll look into uh, buying more clementines. But for now, they need to eat what we have. So I am just starting to put our lunch together and I am making some baked oatmeal. I just need to make sure as I'm talking to you guys that I'm not losing count of what I'm doing here. Okay, I am making a baked oatmeal, which is typically what I would make for breakfast, not lunch, but it's a recipe we really like and I don't usually make it on, on weekdays for breakfast, but I have time today to make it for lunch. I am going to do a recipe and a half today just to make sure it's enough. So a single recipe would make one nine by 13 pan. And that might be enough, but I wanna make sure everybody has enough for lunch. So I'm gonna do one and a half times recipe and it honestly will warm up great if we have some leftover. I have this recipe binder I put together years ago. I just made up this little template for the front and then inside I have these little headings. I've got breakfast in here, I've got um, lunches in here and so on. And so that is where my baked oatmeal recipe is and I wrote it down in this cookbook a long time ago just because it's a staple recipe. We make it a lot. And so because of that, I will try to find the link online that I can share down below in the description box, but sometimes it's a little bit tricky because I might not be able to find this exact recipe online. But I'm gonna start putting my ingredients together. So far I have a bowl of oats. I am adding brown sugar, baking powder, salt, and cinnamon. I'm going to stir these ingredients. Next, I add olive oil, milk, and eggs. Whoops. This gets all mixed. And lastly, I add raisins. I'm gonna have to get out a new bag. I have all these canisters to keep my food items in, like raisins but it holds such a small amount of raisins that I have to fill it all the time. Same with my oats container. I'm like, I think I need to get one two or three times as big so I actually can fit 
a lot more inside. And now I just fold in those raisins. My oven is almost done warming up. My pans are greased, so I'm just going to pour this in now. And this recipe, as you can see, is actually really easy. Like making it today, I'm like, this is really easy to throw together. I just don't usually get started on breakfast early enough on a weekday. Just came out of the oven here. Just getting everything set to the table. Everybody has their serving. And then we pour milk on top, just like you would with a regular bowl of oatmeal. And there's our lunch today. Yeah. My goodness, I am so glad I didn't just do a single batch because look how much we ate. For breakfast time, one pan for just the kids and me is usually enough. But I think just by lunchtime, appetites are just a little bit bigger. We're all cleaned up from lunch, finishing up some schoolwork. Close to done. Um, I am going to stick dinner into the Instant Pot slow cooker device back there. And it's gonna be a super simple, we're actually just having leftovers. So on the weekend, I made a big, big full, this is my small Instant Pot. I used my bigger Instant Pot and it was full like to the top. There was like that much room before the lid full of pumpkin chili. That was my first time making pumpkin chili. I would say we all really enjoyed it. Now, to be completely honest, I didn't think it tasted that much different than normal chili. I wondered if it would have a very different flavor. And it was a little bit sweeter. It was just a full can of pumpkin puree in there, three pounds of ground beef, like it was a big batch. Um, maybe a little bit creamier than usual, my usual chili recipe, but it was really good. And so all that to say, we had enough for two full meals. I could just wait until close to dinner time, dump the leftovers into a pot and just let it simmer on the stove top. But I find this to be an easier method. I'm just gonna dump it in the slow cooker. It will just stay warm for the whole afternoon here. And then, it'll just be ready to go when it's time for dinner. So I'll show you, I have the leftovers sitting here in front of me. Here it is. I will share the recipe again down in the description box. Update on my sourdough loaf. It is shaped now. I leave it sitting on the counter for about a half hour in the nice round shape. Then I transfer it to my Banneton basket. I poured myself some eggnog. Just a little bit of eggnog here Nothing. and I knew it there are kids behind me and I was like they are going to pipe up when they hear me say that um, I thought you guys could have a cup of it after dinner tonight okay yes Yay. so um, I am just boiling some coffee I want it to be really hot because you know I've got cold eggnog and there's my coffee nog as I call it it is addicting during the Christmas season. The kids are each grabbing a snack and what happened Zara? You said, can I please have a snack? And I said what? What did I say? When you asked me for a snack, I said have a snack or have a fruit first, right? So the kids are having a fruit and then they get to find something else from the pantry. There's nothing in the pantry here that looks good to you. Is that what you're telling me? You can have some nuts. Do you want to have some of these almonds? Some of those crackers? These? You can try these crackers. Okay, yeah. Put top of those are meant for soup. You thought they were meant for soup. That is always how we have them. But if you want to have some, you can. That's fine. Sorry, what, Wesley's what? having some pretzels over here. Pardon? What is that having? Oh. Topables. Do you think they're meant for soup? She thinks oh, they're meant no. for soup. Oh. I don't really have them when they're not in soup, but. Zara has a half no apple over here if you want to have half an apple. Exactly. You want a whole one? All right. I'm just about to start making English muffins. These are sourdough English muffins. Mm -hmm. Charity's gonna be my helper today. She's never helped me make English muffins, so I think it's time for her to at least observe to start. It's, there's a little bit of a trick to it. Like it took me many, many times of making them before I felt like, okay, I know what I'm doing and I know how to make these well. And 
Not that there were times of failure, but there were definitely times where they didn't turn out as well. And you have to kind of figure out your oven or your stovetop, I should say, your elements, your pans, your sourdough, like the hydration of it, all that stuff that you just get to, you get to learn, you know, as you use it. So right now, my cast iron pans are on the stovetop. To go with what I just said about knowing your stovetop, knowing your pans, all that, I know that this, this pan here, my English muffins cook at about a three, and on this element, they cook on low. And that one low, that one on three, makes the pans the same, like the same temperature. So I do want these to be hot by the time I put the English muffins on. Not hot, hot, because they're only warming up at a very low temperature, but they sit here for at least five minutes before I put the sourdough onto them. So here is my sourdough that I mixed up this morning. And Charity, you're gonna help me bring the ingredients. I need two tablespoons of honey, two teaspoons of salt, and two teaspoons of baking soda. Charity changed her mind about wanting to mix this when I told her you have to mix it by hand, but she's going to. So you just kind of keep pulling away from the sides here. And when the honey gets all mixed in, it really starts to come together into one nice, neat ball. We do want to make sure the honey and salt and baking soda are all mixed in. So you go ahead and try that. Because it's such a thick dough, it's actually so much easier to do with your hand than to do with any other kitchen tool. I've got coconut oil on the pans and I'm just going to show Charity and you guys how I shape these. So just by hand. And this is the same way that I would make dinner rolls. <laughs> You're hiccuping over there, can you see too? Okay, so I kind of pull them so that the top is nice and round, and then I just stick it onto the pan like that. This pan can hold three of them, and the bigger pan can hold four. So just like that, shape it. Now this first step, it, it takes a little while. So they sit on this pan for about 10 minutes, warming up, and then it depends. Sometimes I feel like I need to move the temperature a little bit warmer. Sometimes I don't, like last time, I cooked them the whole time on this low setting. So we'll just keep an eye on them. But usually after about 10 to 12 minutes, it's time to turn them. And then the second side takes a little bit shorter. There's that first batch. We'll leave them here for about 10 minutes. They are not always completely cooked through the middle. When I, when I cook them, sometimes they're still a little bit doughy in the middle. So I don't even worry about whether they're doughy in the middle or not. It doesn't matter. I put them all onto this plate. I turn the oven on to about 250. And I just, as I, as I take the English muffins off the pan, once they're done, I put them on the plate, stick them in the oven. This is the Corel plate. I just looked at the back to make sure it's a Corel plate. And look at that. Kids washing dishes. If you come to my house, you might find some dishes in the cupboard that aren't quite clean. Anyway, it's an oven safe plate. So they go into the oven. And then by the time we get them open, they're all cooked all the way through. It's been 10 minutes exactly, and you can see that they're kind of just getting a lot more round. They are also rising. And so then I just check and see how the bottom looks. Yeah, I could probably leave it for another minute, get it a little bit more brown. Let's see this one. Okay. Yeah, these ones look like they're ready to turn. Charity's coming downstairs, Charity. I was wondering if you were coming. I told her to watch the clock. I did, I called, but then it was time to get going, so. Okay, those ones are good. See how brown they are? Now, Charity, look at these. Do you see how they look like really nice and round now? Like they've grown a bit. The bottom is kind of rounding too. So you turn the rest of those. This will probably take another five or six minutes. Dinner is ready, which I will show you in a minute. My eldest is getting the Hi. table all set, but I just wanted to say, I love the cold weather meals. When I can use my slow cooker, when I can cook warm, cozy meals, uh, I love that. 
the cold weather, I don't love so much. So it's like little, you know, a little trade in. Not so nice weather, but there are parts of it that I like, like the food. Here is the pumpkin chili. It probably doesn't look too much different than when I showed it to you before warming it up. But we're going to scoop that up into bowls. We've got some grated cheese, lots of grated cheese. We'll also do sour cream. Elijah, would you bring sour cream to the table? Yes. As well as a spoon for it. And then here are the English muffins that came out of the oven. You can see that they're just a bit more browned all around now and definitely cooked through. We will just slice these and butter them. We have these sometimes for lunch with like ham and cheese or we'll do them at breakfast with peanut butter and jam. However you typically would eat English muffins. I guess I just had to show you that yes indeed they are cooked through and the lovely bubbles of the sourdough. So we'll butter those tonight and that is going to be dinner. Do you wish you were at my house tonight? I am so glad I'm here because this just looks so good. And yes, <laughs> there are a bunch of dishes, not even, the, the dinner dishes aren't even there yet. This is just like afternoon snack and prep dishes. Large family life, am I right? It really is far too late for this, but Andrew grabbed a bowl of these chips and asked me if I wanted some and I was like, no, I don't. I'm good tonight. I don't need a snack. And then he came and sat beside me and I mean, I just couldn't resist. So just having a small bowl of the crinkle cut kettle cooked chips. That's where I'll end today's video. Thanks for watching.